Starbucks line, we're in the Starbucks line, and I have 38 tomato and tomatillo plants here. I need to get them some cake pops to keep them occupied, and we are going to go plant. Hey there, Amanda from the Happy Homestead, and I am especially happy today because the last frost date has officially passed. Whoop, whoop. Let's just do a little bit of celebration on that. <laughs> I am so excited because if you can see, I have all, oh, there it is, all of these plants. And by the way, those are just tomatoes and tomatillos. I have 33 tomatoes, five tomatillos that need to get in the ground. They are so ready. Let me show you something. What would have been better if I had said that in my Ace Ventura voice? Let me show you something. All right, so when you have a tomato plant, you want to get it in the ground as deep as possible. And you'll see on the plant, it's hard to see probably, but there's like these little fine hairs uh, and they go all the way up to like, well, right here, really just below this last um, stem branch. Those are all roots getting ready. Like they want to grow and they want to be in the ground. So my goal is to get every one of these tomatoes and even the tomatillos in the ground up to the first branch. So all of this, all of this will be buried. So I have a fun new way to try to do that. I bought something. I'll link it below. You'll get to see how it works today. I have not yet tried it. So this is the debut. Let me show it you. This is called the power planter. Connects to your drill. I think this one um, was seven or eight inches long. I can't remember, but again, I'll link it below. And it basically drills down and gets you a nice deep hole. I can throw some fertilizer in, throw the plant in, cover it up, and we're done. So because I need to do 38 holes, I am hoping this makes that process a little bit easier. All right, before I get started on that, I just wanted to kind of update you from the last garden video, right? We were building, building the tomato trellis. We built the arch trellis. So since then, I've gotten our Premier One electric fence up, and you can kind of see that here behind me. Um, and I'll, the solar battery is right over there, the solar charger. And last night was the first night that I had it charged up and running. And I would say it did a good job so far because yesterday I planted eight eggplant starts that I grew from seed. Everything is from seed this year um, that we did. So. I, Again, I'm just like so hopeful for this year. So I did eight eggplants and I think either 18 or 19 peppers and, and I'll show them to you. So they're all here in the ground already and not one of them has been nibbled down. <laughs> so day one complete. And then the day before yesterday in these 16 pots and I don't know if they're five gallon pots, they might be. I just got them for free at a local nursery. They just discard them and I picked them up. So I have 16 of those and I planted all of our winter and squash, summer squash and watermelons and cantaloupes. All of our melon and squash are in these. And I have about two, mainly two seeds per pot. Some of them, there's a couple of them that have three. And so the goal is to have the squash and the cantaloupe grow up the trellis and then the watermelons, because they're gonna be bigger, hopefully, are going to grow out on the other side towards that onion area. And they'll help sprawl over all over the onion area because eventually the onion will come out. And remember I mentioned that I have to haul my water in here. We don't have water yet on the farm. Um, so I have 21, let me show you, 21 gallons of water here. And that should be enough to get everything nice and watered today. Oh, and I planted 28 green bean seeds yesterday. So that was the other reason why I planted everything or am planting everything over a three day period was so that I could keep bringing in fresh water, right? I could use them, empty them, bring it in full again to make sure that as I'm planting everything, it gets good and watered. So let's start planting these tomatoes. All right, here we go, let's see. Okay, 
metal, I think it works. But this is definitely like a hard clay. So I have to be careful here. Because it definitely gets stuck. But yeah, this is gonna make it so much easier. right here. Might need a shovel to help that one. Okay, so as you can see from these last three, the first two went pretty good. The last three I am hitting some serious clay. So I'm gonna get my shovel and help dig that out. Okay, all holes are dug. Let's get these in. I'm so happy the first 10 are in. That didn't take too long. 10, 12 minutes max maybe. Once I started shoveling the clay, it really wasn't as bad. It's just the drill couldn't get through it. But the soil's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So I'm gonna go do the next 10. Um, two things though. Once all of the tomatoes and tomatillos in, then I'm gonna put my roller hooks up and show you how I'm trellising them, actually get them trellised up today. And then number two, I don't know which tomato's which. <laughs> so just wanna state that. We'll see as they grow. I had them all labeled, right? It's mostly paste, but there's a lot of other varieties in there. Um, but one, and they were all on our back deck. And then one day I went out on our like table, like our back deck table. And my daughter had taken them all off the table and put them on the ground, like on the deck because she wanted to have a, a play picnic. And so they were all like disorganized like she just put them wherever and they you know they were like organized on certain trays and she didn't pick up the tray she just picked up each plant so i don't know which is which and it's okay that'll be part of the surprise as it grows It is quarter of 11 a.m. It is 72 degrees out. It's gonna be so hot these next few days. I am so glad these are in, but I am definitely in need of a drink of water. <laughs> anyway, so all of the tomatoes and tomatillos are done. Hallelujah! I started these seeds, all of these seeds, in the middle of February. It was right around my birthday weekend because that was my birthday present to myself was to start the seeds. And here we are like almost two and a half months later, or I guess it is two and a half months later, and they're finally in the ground. So lots of love and care going into this, praying it pays off for the garden. The last thing I need to do, everything has been watered. Last thing I need to do is put these clips on. These are the clips, the roller, they're called roller hooks um, from Johnny Seeds, roller hooks. And they are going to go onto the conduit and the line is gonna come down to 
to the tomato or the tomatillo. And I have these mini clips that are gonna clip to the stem. So that's the last thing I need to do for these. And then I'll just give you a quick tour of the garden. a little more cumbersome than I had thought, but basically these are tiny little clips which are no different than most garden clips, except in the middle in here, there's these little teeth. And so the string is supposed to go right in here, whereas the stem is there, right? And so it's supposed to clamp down on the string right here, but it's not exactly as tight as it should be. So I have one done. We'll see how it goes. I think I'm gonna do the rest um, over the next day or two. They're, they're obviously not that big, so they don't have to be trellised yet, but I do want to get them trellised before too long because they'll grow very quickly. So again, this is all an experiment. This is all brand new this year, and so you'll get to see how this goes. I will certainly share the highs and lows and what we like and don't like. All right, as promised, let me show you a quick tour of the garden. So along the fence are eight eggplant and it goes kind of all the way down. And then the row closest to me here are the peppers. And so where the egg, eight eggplants stop, there are more peppers. So basically these two rows are eggplant and peppers. And then in the middle here, in between the tomatoes and peppers, this whole area, this is, I'm gonna build this up a little bit, um, but this is where we're gonna grow our sweet potatoes. So I need to get some more soil in here build up a little bit of a berm uh, for the sweet potatoes to grow easily because they're not going to grow very easily in this clay. So I need to get some more soil in here and this is all sweet potatoes. And then we have our tomatoes and tomatillos that we just did today. And then along the fence over there we have about 24 or 28 uh, I think it's Kalima green bean seeds. Now I'm hoping they do okay, but again, with the clay, we'll see. But the green beans, tom tomatoes, tomatillos, sweet potatoes, eggplant, peppers. And so, as I'd mentioned, we've got all of our squash and melons in here. And so I was able to water everything today, which is really good news with 21 gallons of water. So knowing that I can come out here in one shot and water everything really gives me some peace of mind since I do have to haul the water in. The last thing I'm doing though, to try to help capture as much rainwater as I can, I don't have a rain barrel out here, but I got a bin <laughs> from our garage. I'm gonna get, I think, three of them and just randomly place them through the garden. And then I got these mosquito dunks. And so I am going to let the rainwater fill this up when we have some big storms so I can actually use it for our garden and um, throw a mosquito dunk in each bin to help keep mosquito larvae from breeding, right, from growing. So we got one there, let's put a dunk in. And that's it. And then I have a rain gauge that I bought at Tractor Supply, a big rain gauge down here. So I can also help keep track of how many inches of rain we're getting when I come out. For the most part though, the summer garden is done. I just need everything to grow. I obviously, I have sweet potatoes that are coming in in a month. I ordered those slips from Johnny's and they are not shipping until towards the end of May. So I have a month to kind of get the sweet potato bed ready. Um, the onions behind me, those are all our onions behind me from Dixondale Farms. They'll be ready to harvest by the end of the summer. And then we have a lot of garlic both here, kind of way behind me over there, and then at our house too. And that'll get harvested end of June, beginning of July. I feel so relieved. Now I still have some more things I have to plant at home. I have all of our herbs and our medicinal flowers and plants that I'm gonna try to plant later today and tomorrow at home. But this chore is done and I am so grateful. Thanks for joining me today. I'll keep you updated as promised because this is going to be the highlight of my summer. <laughs> stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.